Welcome to the podcast. This is crazy shit in real estate. And I think somebody booked you on my show. Did you get a chance to check out what the show's about? Yes, it's some crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Crazy Shit in Real Estate, a weekly podcast where I walk you through some of the wildest, most unbelievable stories you'll hear from the world of real estate. If you like real estate and you love crazy, this is the podcast for you. You don't look like the type to tell me a story about porn and dead bodies and sex in a house. It looks like your angle is probably slightly classier, if I had to guess. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell my viewers a little bit about yourself, where you're located, what do you do that's in and around the real estate business so they can get a, a little bit of a picture of you, especially my audio listeners who are now thinking, what the hell is she talking about? Hey, audio people, y'all got to roll over to YouTube and see the videos so you understand all the classiness that is Tristan Sutton. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, only the best for Lee Browse. So first of all, thank you for having me. I'm a certified Facebook ads expert, also a consultant for Facebook. So they hired me to consult them on their curriculum uh, when they go around the country teaching business owners how to use their product Facebook ads. And so I am a CE instructor with the Houston Association of Realtors, the uh, largest member association in Texas with 39,000 realtors. And I teach real estate agents how to use Facebook ads to attract and convert their target market. So that's what I'm here today to help your, your listeners and viewers learn how to use this tool in this pandemic. Look, that means if you're smart, you know you better give a shout out to Bob Hale because he likes hearing his name when we talk about HAR. So you should give a shout out to Bob Hale. Shout out to Bob Hale. <laughs> <laughs> Bob, we do that with love. We know, we know. So anyway, because Bob does have a ridiculously robust association with the amount of offerings that are going on to make sure that realtors do know how to reach their community. Because when we talk about target markets, Tristan, it's all about reaching people in your community which realtors are great at. And during pandemic, I think they can be even better at it than they normally are because now we don't call about listings. We're calling to say, you need anything? You good? And there's a right. lot of checking on people that's going on. But in your time in and around realtors and especially balancing a world that's not touchy feely because Facebook is obviously tech and then realtors are super relationshipy. What do you think is the best practice for an agent who's trying to embrace the social media in a way that is genuine and authentic and can ads be part of that strategy? Um, great question to answer that. Let's, let's, oh, let's skip the embrace. Let's skip the warm and fuzzy. You need to run in, hug it, choke it, get to know it, <laughs> swap DNA with it. Social media is going to be your tool right now. Um, after coronavirus, we don't swap DNA after coronavirus. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wear gloves and a mask. Um, I'm stealing yes. this just so you know. This is totally going to show up in one of my presentations. I can't even help it. <laughs> you know, please do. And I'll give you another one people have been loving. People say, Tristan, how are you doing today? I'm safe, sane, and sanitized. So take that one as well. <laughs> But I think, then let me try to remember the question. Now, go back to it. Yes, uh, they need to. Something about embracing, Facebook ads genuine and part of the relationship, but we totally got distracted because yeah, we're absolutely. in the real estate space. That's what happens with <laughs> crazy stuff in real estate, right? So basically, we re realtors need to embrace this tool. And many have been reluctant. I don't really like it. Just people posting selfies and whatnot. Get over it. Stop having a blockbuster strategy and a Netflix reality. This is where people are. People are spending probably eight to 10 hours a day on social media. And if you can't go door knock, go to networking events, so on and so forth, be in the public, this is how you still connect with your farm, your market, your area. So really it's not just embracing social media, but it's the ads. And so many people don't really understand that. Your posts are suppressed. If any of you go look at your Facebook business page right now and look at your metrics, look at your last five posts. If you have a thousand, 10,000 followers, it'll say maybe a hundred reach, maybe 50 reach. How can you grow transactions and get more transactions if you're only reaching the same 20, 30, 40, 100 people? And most of them probably already clients, your family, or title or mortgage people. So Facebook ads is how you keep your content or actually force your content into the phones, tablets, and computers of your target market instead of just posting and hoping. So what should people be posting that's going to be worthy of getting a click and working as an ad? Because you and I both know that most of what people are putting forth is like, here's a picture of a house, contact me for information. And it's totally not engaging. So yeah. what, what do we do that's 
going to, what, what works? I mean, what does Facebook see that works? I know that you're all about algorithms and metrics and underneath all that salt and pepper and silver is a big old nerd. And so <laughs> what would the nerd say about how to make this work? Well, first is video. Video is king or queen right now on the platform. It's the performing the best. And Facebook has actually said they want video to be their number one medium um, going forward. Um, so putting videos that educate your audience and giving them value right now, giving them tips to stay safe. If they're still selling their home, what can they do right now as far as um, with the rules of the quarantine? Also, virtual tours. So if you have an open house that you want to do, you can do a virtual open house with a video. You can do a Facebook Live in the house um, in the Facebook event page and just walk people through and take questions. Hey, can you show us um, the bedroom? Or can you show us the backyard? And do a live tour of the open house while people are sitting there on this page watching you. So you can still have activity. Okay, so you got to answer a question for me because I know you're in the inside crowd. If <laughs> there's a good video on YouTube and you share it to Facebook, it's like suppressed beyond suppression. So what is the best practice for video? Is it still live or is it make a video and then only upload it to Facebook and Facebook owns Instagram. Mm -hmm. So you've got all these different places going on. Let's just go ahead and rule YouTube out because we know Facebook hates them. Yes. Best, best practice for video, knowing we have Instagram people and Facebook people. So that's a kind of a loaded question. It depends on people if they're comfortable with video, because we all know there's so many that aren't. So safe answer would be to go across the board, do a pre-recorded video because something is better than nothing and the algorithm is still going to favor it. Edit it, make sure it's, it's form fitting and up to your brand level and upload that natively to your business page and then repurpose that video to YouTube Instagram or Instagram TV if it's more than, you know, a minute. So business page instead of personal profile? Both. Do it all. Right now, spread it all out. Okay, so what if you have the same video? Can you put the same video on your personal page and your business page? Or does Facebook recognize that it's duplicate content? No, I do that every day. And what happens is you got to realize the people on your friends list probably aren't on your business page and vice versa. So make sure you're maximizing all your content as much as you can. Well, because they don't want to be, because frankly, most of the video that real estate people put out there sucks because it's really dry and boring and dreadful. So you suggest like a virtual showing. What do you think is the best video somebody could do today in the middle of coronavirus that's going to be favored by Facebook and you see people clicking on it and looking at it? Well, right now they're really favoring video that's around three minutes specifically on your business page. So if you want to maximize your business page, make a video that's around three minutes. And once again, you have to add value call out your audience, identify who you're talking to. So if your market is luxury, then you need to identify with your market. Say, hey, show them an image of a home that you want to sell them, not the first time home program. So that's make sure that you're identifying your target markets, um, I, uh, making sure you're adding value to them, and then just stand out, do something different. Don't just do the same, holding your phone, buy a little tripod for Amazon for $19 and make sure it's good quality, get you a lavalier mic, that you can plug in and get good sound quality and make sure it's well lit as well. But if you use AirPods, have hair like mine that you can hide it because if people see your AirPod, they will give you some nasty feedback. It's crazy how people are angry about that AirPod. Have you noticed that, Tristan? Well, you know, it's a lot like of- they get, they get fired up. They do. And you know, you got the crazy rumors going around about 5G causing the COVID cancer. You're going to get cancer from your phone and things like that. So I don't know. <laughs> and by the way, when he's talking luxury, Tiffany Curry, he is talking to you. So I know you're watching this. And so make sure you show some luxury video out there and Tristan's going to be watching. And, and I'm actually on Tiffany's roster to teach a class for her agent. So, well, she's got this brand new Berkshire Hathaway office yep. and she, she knocks the cover off the ball every day. And not that you other Houston realtors aren't amazing too, but I just happen <laughs> to know Tiffany does luxury and opened her Berkshire Hathaway brand. Okay. So Tristan, You've been around real estate. You've seen good practices. You've seen bad practices. You've probably bought and sold houses yourself. What's the one thing you saw in and around real estate that made you say, you can't be serious, that I really just see that, that really just happened, and you had to unsee it or fix it? You know, really the, the main thing I see is the posting and hoping. When I talk to agents all the time, what are you doing for marketing? Well, I'm posting on Facebook and I'm posting on Instagram. What else are you doing? Well, I'm just kind of waiting for the phone to ring or get referrals. It's like, 
Yeah, that that was a good strategy in like 2009. <laughs> that was a good strategy, never. <laughs> exactly, maybe. <laughs> when organic reach was great. But right now, every agent, regardless of your, your vertical, should be using ads to stay in front of your audience. And you don't have to spend a lot. You can spend as little as $5 a day. That's less than a cup of uh, a venti macchiato from Starbucks. And you can reach hundreds, if not thousands of people while they're sitting at home. You have a captive audience. We're all at home, staring at a phone. Get in front of your audience. <laughs> okay, so on that, so April, you may know this is Fair Housing Month in Realtor World. And we know that Facebook changed some of the audience things on ads to make sure that yes. it was going to be harder for people to violate fair housing. And I'm sure they weren't doing it on purpose. I'm sure never. they were all above board. There's but no such thing as redlining. No, no. <laughs> it never existed, right? It's all imaginary. Yeah. yeah. So if somebody wants to be a really great proponent of fair housing, but they still want to target an audience, what would you say are the, the area, th the things they could use to designate an audience? What's safe for realtors who actually don't want to violate fair housing, but want to hit a target market? Can you still group by zip code and by income level and by the age of a buyer? What, what categories are still out there? So the good news and bad news, um, good news is you don't have to worry about violating anything because Facebook won't let you. <laughs> you literally can only target people from between ages 18, 65. You can't target based on gender, income, zip code. You can only do an address. Zip code, is, zip code is actually a really good thing, man. It used to be, but now it's just address or city 15 mile radius of that area. So what we have to, and what I teach in my classes, we have to get creative with retargeting. So that's where you have to be very strong with your initial message. Hey, are you a first time home buyer looking to rent, um, looking for luxury, identify that target market in that 15 mile radius. And once they either click on your website or watch your video, now you retarget them because now those are the ones that have self selected and say, I'm interested in what you offer. Now they're in a nice little bucket and it's easier to fish in a barrel than in a whole ocean. So now you stay in front of them with your branding, your testimonial videos, things of that nature. By the way, my normal consumer viewers who are over here just to get the insight on real estate, retargeting is what happens when you look at that pair of shoes on Zappos and it chases you around the internet. So when you look at somebody's house and it's chasing you around, don't be mad at that realtor. They're actually trying to do enough good advertising so that you could find them, which means that when you hire them to sell your house, they're doing the right things to find buyers for your property, so don't get mad. But I will mention this on the fair housing side, y'all. If you are a luxury agent and you do a Facebook ad and it's a 15 mile radius, you're gonna draw in all kinds of price points and all kinds of people. Just remember that to be the best professional realtor possible, what you do for one, you do for all. And if you don't serve a first time buyer price range, you should just have a professional contact who does to whom you could say, hey, I primarily work with luxury buyers, but I have a colleague who is rock solid, amazing, and will help you and then make them a professional connection. So if you're going to not work with everybody, have somebody who can, but ask the same questions of everybody. We all have to get better about fair housing and ads can still help you grow your business, even if it's a part of the market you don't serve. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And everybody wins, everybody wins in that situation because we love our neighbors. And don't forget that everybody's your neighbor. Even if you don't like them, you could still love them. You just don't have to hang out with them. And so that's where social distancing is good, right? Yeah, that's really a perk right there, right? <laughs> Six feet away, I didn't wanna hang out with you anyway, and now I can't, what? So Tristan, give us one story or tip. You can choose a story or a tip. It could be when you bought a house, something that you were surprised to encounter, or you can give a tip to people who are trying to figure out how to make Facebook a happier place because we know that as 2020 goes on, it's probably going to turn into more places where people are typing in all caps and hollering through the internet. So how can they be happier on Facebook? Or you can tell us a story, your choice. You know, I'll, I'll go with a, a tip. So right now I'm already seeing people kind of get disgruntled easily, um, argumentative over little things. Um, spread joy. You know, that's one of the most powerful emotions um, that we have. And it's one of the most powerful tools in the no like trust factor. That's how people do business with each other. They know like trust. So if you give them those warm and fussy fuzzies by making them laugh, smile, they're going to feel a little more connected to you want to do more business with you. So it's a win-win across the board. It makes you feel good. It gives them euphoria and gets people closer connected to your brand. 
See, he started off with warm and fussy, but that's because in Houston, when it is warm, people get fussy, but he changed it to fuzzy. So that was a good catch there. All right, Tristan. So if anybody wants a pro on Facebook who does consulting, training, educating, and can give them insight, they want to find you, hire you. How do they find you? Absolutely. So the easiest way, I'll make it easy because it's hard to spell my name. Text the one word free guide, that's F-R-E-E-G-U-I-D-E, -E, to the number 31996. And what that will do is give you a link that will allow you to download a free workbook that teaches you how to make your own Facebook ads. And it also puts you on my email list. And that way you can stay connected to me. So that is one word, free guide, F-R-E-E-G-U-I-D-E, -E -E, to the number 31996. And pay attention, y'all, because when you try to type in free guide, Apple's going to try and put a space in there, just like it yes. seems to think I type the word ducking all the time. And I have never told anybody to duck. And so pay attention <laughs> to what it's trying to make you text. And look, you just got that. That was funny. That was the delayed response. And it says, you're going to get the free Facebook getting started guide right away from Tristan. So all of his information will be in the show notes for this episode, including this text information, because you might be riding your Peloton right now in London and you couldn't <laughs> write it down. It's okay. Tristan, thank you for what you do in Realtor World to help make realtors smarter and better and better able to engage with their communities. So I appreciate what you're doing in Houston. And I hope you have fun with Tiffany's office because I imagine you'll have a good time over there. I'm sure it's going to be a luxurious experience. <laughs> it will be an experience no matter what. And thanks for coming on the show. And by the way, guys, if you enjoyed listening and learning, if you want to ask him about Facebook and their suppression of fake news, you will have to reach out to him after this show because we don't have our tinfoil on our heads today. But feel free because he's wearing silver. So obviously he's got tinfoil in his house. I'm fairly confident. But if you have a story you want to talk about real estate, something related to our space, give me a shout. Hit me up on social media. If you like our episodes, five stars, subscribe, and come back and visit sometime. And when you reach out to Tristan and he's helpful, you should tell him thank you. And then let me know that he was awesome so we can bring in more good guests. Awesome. Thank you for having me, Lee. I appreciate it. I'll see you next time I'm in Houston. Thank you. Look forward to it. If you are listening to this episode and you need to tell us something about your crazy life in or around real estate, then tweet me at Lee Brown or reach me on any of the social networks. That's if you're a broker, realtor, investor, inspector, lender, or just a regular normal human being who happens to have dealt in real estate. Subscribe for more episodes. And as always, we are thrilled that you joined us for some crazy shit in real estate. See you next time.